One Sky is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola, serving Alaskans quality soft drinks since 1937. One Sky, a special presentation of Heartbeat Alaska, a forum for Native issues and concerns. One voice, one sky. Hello and welcome to One Sky. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining me. One Sky is a program created to share the cultures of our indigenous peoples from around the world. Today we travel to northern Canada and visit with the Inuvialuit, the Inuit people that live there. Sit back and relax now and enjoy a film called Drum Dancing. <laughs> Inuvialui drum dancers have been singing and dancing for countless generations. The songs and dances are as old as our culture, kept alive by our people and shared in public gatherings. Through drum dancing, our people celebrate Inuvialui life, remember the people and events of the past, and offer hope for the future. In the old days, the Inuvialuit loved to dance when they gathered together in large groups. Billy Day of Inuvik remembers times like those at the old Inuvialuit village of Kitigazuit. Long ago, the people used to gather at Kitigazuit. The big bay at Kitigazuit used to be filled with houses. When the people got together, they would play games and drum dance. They did not know about Christmas and New Year's long ago. They picked the darkest days, and that's when they would get together. They would challenge each other and play games. When the people were out on the land, they would make up a song they could bring to the gathering. When they had finished making a house, the dancing would start. When everyone was starting to get tired, they would pick the dancer with the best song. Performing his song, he would lead all the people right out the door. When they were finished, the people would go back to their camps. Before they left to go back out on the land, they would make plans to get together again. The dances were very popular with people of all ages. 
Long ago, almost all the people joined in when there was a drum dance. Not like today. Almost all the people knew the songs. That is why they would go out on the floor to dance. The elders taught their children how to dance. They made sure that the skills of the drummers and singers would survive for future generations. I learned to dance from my mother and father. I liked their enthusiasm when they were dancing. I'm still drum dancing and I really like it. The drummers and dancers need properly made drums. Norman Felix of Tuktoyaktuk explains how the drums are made. This is oak. It is straight like this because I put it in hot water and steamed it. While I steamed it, I bent it. This is the fiberglass. It is easy to work with, so I use it. This is caribou horn. This is where you tie the skin to the groove. I put the wood ends together and place it in a clamp. I use aluminum screws because they won't rust. I put the screws on first, and when it's ready, I put the skin on. This is the groove where I tie down the skin. I tighten the skin. I leave the edge of the skin hanging until it dries. We work on this to make it smooth and even. This other one is lower than this one. This is where the skin lays. This one has the sharp edge. Now I'm ready to put the skin on. When I bend the rim, I clamp it. I always leave it overnight to dry. When I wake up, it's ready for the skin. This is the skin I'm going to put on the drum. I'm going to stretch it out and tie it. I'm going to put lots of string on. This is how it looks when it's ready. The one I am working on will turn out like this. In the old days, men made the drums and the women worked very hard to make the costumes for the dancers. The designs, the skills, and the sewing 
have been passed down from one generation to the next. When I hear there's going to be a gathering sometime soon, I start to make some clothing. I try to make the trimmings different each time. <laughs> when there's a gathering of people, I always want to dress in nice clothing. Material for the clothing comes from animals hunted by the Inuvialui. Now, southern clothes and supplies are also used. <laughs> The clothing is made from summer caribou skins. We use these skins to make dancing parkas, hats, pants, and mittens. We make the trimming from the belly part of the caribou. Sometimes we scrape off the hair and tan the skin until it is very soft. Long ago, the Alaskan drummers and dancers had their own group. They learned their own ways and songs. The drummers and dancers from around the coast had their own songs, too. One special piece of costume for the men of the Delta dancers is the loon headdress. Long ago, people had a great amount of respect for the loon and the eagle. The loon was respected for its ability to stay underwater for long periods of time. The eagle was respected for its incredible ability to hunt. Because of this respect, the people chose them for the hat. The hat is not used for every drum dance. The person who is the best hunter is the one who uses it. The making of the songs and the dances go hand in hand. They are both very important for telling a story. Songs were made about hunting and fishing. Others told stories about the animals and of special times in the people's lives. During the darkest months of winter, people gathered together to play games and dance. When they were still out on the land, they would make up songs about animals, such as geese and ducks. Then they would add the motion of those animals in a dance. When they gathered together, they would perform the songs. Although men and women sing and dance together, when a song is about an animal, only the men perform. Each of the dances has a purpose and meaning. Some dances tell a story. 
They might show how Inuvialuit culture has changed. Other times, the dances are just for fun. Saratimiak and Kathleen Hansen perform an exercise dance. Many of the Inuvialui dances tell important stories. The dancer acts out an event from the life of the Inuvialui. Alex's dance tells a story. Some people living together began to run out of food. One of them started making fish nets. When the person starts walking out to the ocean, he begins to make a song. He found a good place to set the fish net, and then he started chiseling. He scoops the ice out and sets his net. Once it was set, he made a song and started dancing. As he pulls out his fish net, he says that his people would be happy if he got some meat. He has a seal in his net, and he starts to drag it out of the water. Some of the dances mix Inuvialui traditions with the dances of the white people. This dance they call going down to the floor. The people learn to jig and dance the white man's way. A person made a drum dance combining the white man's dance with our dance. Drum dancing remains a very important way of celebrating Inuvialuit life and culture. Drummers from Taktuyaktuk visited Holman to share their songs and dances. Tuck drum dancers proved to be extremely popular. Within minutes, dozens of people in the hall were on the floor dancing. Drumming and dancing is an important part of our culture. It's one of the ways we express ourselves as a people. It's a tradition that identifies us.
Delta drummers and dancers have traveled across North America to perform our songs and dances. Hey! <laughs> Drum dancers continue to perform and hope that drum dancing will remain popular and important throughout the Arctic. They love their songs and costumes, and they love to share their culture with everyone. But it saddens them to see their traditions dying. They wonder if the next generation will still be dancing. Alex and Hope Gordon have both been dancing since they were children. It has always been an important part of their lives. They have passed their love for dancing onto their children. son, Danny, and their granddaughter, Georgianne, are members of the Delta Drummers and Dancers. The Gordons have tried to get other kids interested in dance by teaching it at schools. The only child we have taught is our own grandchild. A few times we taught drum dancing in the school. Some of the kids learned a little bit. The elders know that they will not be around forever to keep this tradition alive. They feel it is important the children learn, but they also realize that times have changed and that young people have a lot more responsibilities today. It would be good to teach the kids. Drum dancing will finish pretty soon. I'm getting old for drum dancing. Drum dad, old. Our kids say they would like to learn. They always want to go with us, but they also have jobs, which makes it difficult. We all know how important our drum dancing is, and we all know that it is up to us to keep it going. It's the culture. No culture, no history. Look at the 
costumes made with great skill and attention. Listen to the beat of the drums. Hear the songs which tell of long ago and of life on the land. Feel the spirit of the Inuvialuit as they practice their thriving culture and traditions. information from your community that you would like to share with our viewers, please contact One Sky, 2611 Fairbanks Street, Suite D, Anchorage, Alaska, 99503, or give us a call at area code 907-272-8111, or fax us at 272-7005. Thank you so much for joining me for another One Sky. I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you indigenous cultures from around the world. Join me again next week for One Sky. I would like some of my friends to learn to drum dance like me. I'd like to get other people to learn how to dance.